Uh, welcome to actual play. Uh, we're going to do Wolf Spell this morning with these fine folks. I am not a face you're used to seeing hosting this. Uh, I'm um, Epi, and I'll also be running this game, which I also wrote. This is like the Epi show right here. But before I talk about myself, uh, I'd like some of these uh, lovely players to introduce themselves. Um, Andy, you want to uh, let us know who you are and why you're excited about wolves? Hi, everybody. Um, it turns out that I'm Andy. Uh, pronouns are she and they. Uh, there's so much to be excited about in regards to wolves. Uh, I think the most immediate thing I think about is there's up in BC, there's a bunch of coastal wolves that spend time swimming around uh, between various bits of land and eat a whole bunch of seafood rather than being a more terrestrial oriented wolf. That's that's a good and nice thing to be to be excited about. That's what I got. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> um, my name is Gian. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I work in outdoor education and wilderness survival. I teach children and adults uh, various land skills. So anything kind of like naturalist related um, is really near and dear to me. And I love wolves. Uh, me and uh, my friends often ask if we were wolf kids or horse kids when we were kids and I was for better or worse both as it turns out <laughs> um so I I really love um uh studying them and recently I've been uh re-watching a documentary about the wolves of Yellowstone and how they like revitalize the ecosystem there that's really cool if you guys want to check it out I think it's on YouTube um how about you Naja what's your deal hi I'm Naja pronouns are she her uh I am excited to play this game again because last time i was very urban and i want to go for the exact opposite pole and be super wolfy this time yeah. uh see how that goes um because i myself am naturally a terribly urban person uh <laughs> and i hate going outside so we're gonna see how <laughs> how this works out. uh what about you Nita? <laughs> Uh, hi, I'm Misha B. Uh, she, her. Um, I, I am a fan of the werewolf genre in general, and so anything werewolf uh, I will read or watch or consume in, in whatever way that is. But I'm also a very much a city girl like, like Nadja, so uh, <laughs> it, it'll be interesting to I see. It's always interesting to see the difference. And it's like, I want to be this outdoor toasty nut crunchy, but that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Epi? <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Epi. I use he, him pronouns. Um, as uh, I mentioned earlier, I, I wrote this game and I'm super excited about it because we just finished a Kickstarter to publish it on a trifold record album, uh, Sans Record. Uh, so uh, I am hyped for that and uh, can't wait to get to work on making that into a reality so I can hold that up and show it to the world. Um, and I, I think I watched that, that Yellowstone Wolf documentary as research for this game. Like it's, it's an older documentary, right? Like, cause yeah. I originally wrote this game like five years ago, but I think I remember. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. a lot of people have revisited, um, that particular case cause it's like so dramatic in its mm -hmm. impact. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, yeah, I think the documentary I watched was about that old impact. Didn't it like, didn't the wolf reintroduction like change the river flow and stuff? It did. Yeah, it did. We can go into that uh, later. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. I remember this documentary. It's very cool. It's very cool. Um, and yeah, Excellent. I'm going to keep it pithy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about this game then. Um, some of you have played before, some of you have not. I am going to uh, teach as we go along. The concept in this game is that you're going to play adventurers of the sword and sorcery variety uh, who have chosen to turn themselves into wolves. I shouldn't say chosen. There's a few options here where uh, the choice is made for you. But uh, for some reason or another, you've been turned into wolves and uh, that to, in order to complete some dire quest that stands before you. And what we'll do here is uh, we'll make our characters and we'll start by making who they were before they turned into wolves and then we will turn them into wolves uh, Which is my favorite point point. Uh, and then we'll uh, run out as wolves into the world and see what we can do 
Nice. I am going to be your winter, which is my zany name for uh, a uh, GM in this game. And uh, I guess the main thing to know about this game is we're going to use two six-sided dice. Uh, one will be our wolf die and one will be our blood die. And we'll roll them both. And whichever one is higher is going to determine which part of your being is in control. You'll be in a wolf body, but sometimes you can think like a human and do human things. And other times you think like a wolf and do wolfy things. And uh, the game will restrict your choices based on how you roll. All right. But let's start by making these sword and sorcery adventurers that have to turn into wolves. And I am opening the wrong document. There we go. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to think about these characters. I have a list of descriptors that uh, you're just going to, I'll go through them and you'll decide amongst yourselves who is best described by these descriptors and that will determine the various benefits you get as you uh, play the game. The first one is many have tested my sword arm and now wait to meet vengeance upon me in the afterlife. The second one is, I am witness to stranger worlds than most. The arcane and preternatural are to me as wolves and weather are to the farmer. The third one is, I am at home when I sleep roofless and hunt my fare far from civilization. The fourth one is, I am most alive in the houses, halls, and alleyways of humanity. And uh, the last one is, no one ever truly knows where I stand and who I keep at dagger point. And I think, we, Nadja, you were talking about going wolfy right like yeah i'm not taking the fourth uh alive in the houses halls and alleyways of humanity yeah. that's when i'm oh i shouldn't use that gesture i'm not doing that one. yeah sorry <laughs> uh are you interested in the i am at home when i sleep roofless and hunt my fair far from civilization do you want to go full on wolf right away or i hmm, i like i like either that one <laughs> And or um, no one ever truly knows where I stand. Mm. I, I'm somewhere in that space. Do any of these call out to any of you others? I, I would like to be Spoopy Wolf. Like, Which one's that one? <laughs> stranger, witness to stranger worlds than most. The arcade and preacher naturally are to me as wolves and weather off to the farm. Awesome. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so uh, in that case, then, when you face the supernatural, you get to add three to your blood die after you've rolled. Uh, and this benefit is something you can roll the dice first and decide whether that's going to help you or not uh, and make the decision then. Oh, that was the other thing I should have explained about the dice. We're rolling the dice. We're looking for which one's higher, but then we're also finding the difference between them. So the higher one... The further away it is, the further away it is from the lower one, the better it is for you. You always subtract the lower from the higher, and you want a large number. Uh, so in in this case, if uh, Misha's wolf faces the supernatural, she can roll and look at the results and decide if that plus three is going to give her an even better result, or it's just going to ruin a really good wolf result. <laughs> um. I think I'll go, I'll go off type and say, I am most alive in the houses, halls, and alleyways of humanity. Ooh. Delightful. Yeah. All right. Uh, when you must know the minds of people, even your own human mind, you may roll plus three to your blood die after you yeah. roll. Mm -hmm. All right. I need help. Which two yeah. are left? I can't oh. track. That's fine. It is, uh, many have tested my sword arm and now wait to meet vengeance upon me in the afterlife. Hmm. And uh, then they're the two that Nadja is trying to decide between. <laughs> uh -huh. Which are, uh, I am at home when I sleep roofless and hunt my fair far from civilization. And no one ever truly knows where I stand and who I keep at dagger point. Do you know what you're on about, Nadja? I'm... I am mostly interested in being an outsider to the group fictionally. So, so that no one knows where you stand sounds very true to yeah. that. Great. I mean, sword arm also works. Uh, I was really group. excited about that one. Okay. Well, then. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I want to make, I was, was very curious to see what you're on about and I didn't want to make your decision making more complicated. Oh, no worries. I, I mean, <laughs> this is your first time playing and I've been around the bend at least once. <laughs> um, I, I like to share. Uh, so of the two, So, uh, sorry, okay, there we go. that's okay. I'm back. Did... Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, we... I think Naja's frozen this time. Oh, oh Naja frozen. Oh. oh, there she's back. Okay. <laughs> Yay, there she's back. Yay. What is happening? Oh, I don't know. You were starting to externalize your thoughts, and the internet shut you down. <laughs> I was. I live on the internet, and the internet needs to act like it knows who I am. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I was saying the dagger point one uh, mm -hmm. fits the idea in my head better. Oh. All right. Um, which we use uh, Rufless as the the leftover one. Yeah. So for the many of tested my sword arm, you get a plus three to your blood die in performing tasks of gore and hatred whenever you have to do violence. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for the no one ever truly knows where I stand and who keep who I keep at dagger point in matters of deception and trickery, you get a plus three to blood die if you so choose. Now we have one left over. If somebody wants to grab that one up, uh, in addition to everything else, they can. Otherwise, we can just move on. Is it, is it call out to anyone? Good, I think. Go. You said move on. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry. yeah. Okay. All right. Let's move on then. All right. So now the next thing we need to do is we need to ask each other some questions about our characters. These are questions about our characters before they turned into wolves. So this is who they were uh, before we uh, make them good doggos. Uh, so the rules are specifically that everyone should answer at least three of them, but we have limited time here on the internet. So uh, we're gonna go through and at least get one to everyone. And then if we need some follow-ups, we'll go with that and then move on. And I will start us off. And uh, let me see here. I am curious about, Misha, I'm curious about your spookiness. Uh, I mean, like, I, the, the question I want to answer, or I want to ask, so I should ask it, is, um, like, is it that you're into spooky things, or do, are you actually spooky to other people? I should answer, I should ask that in a more leading way. <laughs> do the spooky uh, things find you? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Uh, a little of both, a little column A, a little column B. So uh, yes, the spooky things are drawn to me, but I am also drawn to the spooky things and this kind of weird symbiosis kind of going on. Uh, I, I kind of get the feeling like she seeks them out as much as, and it's it's probably one of those chicken egg questions. She's like, I don't know whether I sought them out <laughs> first or if they sought me out first. And so I went looking for them and we just kept going back and forth or what? Uh, so... Uh, my question then is, are you in a position in society where they turn to you often for for answers when spooky things happen? Or is it something where they are like, don't, don't go to that house. That That's where a spooky person lives. <laughs> I think most of the time it's, oh, hey, creepy trick lives over there. Mm -hmm. But when you, the shit hits the fan... They're the one. Oh, wait, no. Spooky Nick lives over there. You should go ask him what the hell's going on. Right. <laughs> Good. Uh, Naja, what, uh, what was the th most egregious thing that you did that makes you an outcast? I... Um, I turn to witness protection or the equivalent thereof. Um, and so I'm, I'm from the underworld in some, some sense. And the authorities were like, Hey, if you rat out this other person, we won't execute you. And I was like, that sounds like a deal. Um, and so I'm considered untrustworthy and cowardly. But maybe mm -hmm. not a problem anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kind of, I'm a loose end and nobody likes loose ends. Um, let's see. 
Ah. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. What is your greatest triumph in the halls and alleyways of humanity? What are you known mm -hmm. for? Um, I think that I was recently um, given the robe of the high priestess of the court, uh, whatever kind of like religious sect um, that our clan or court or whatever it is belongs to, there is like a sort of overseeing role within it that it's equivalent to high priestess but i am very very young like almost like adolescent almost still a child mm -hmm. and so even though i've earned it it's like a point of pride and i'm honestly pretty arrogant about it um but like i'm i'm definitely supposed to be there i just don't let anyone forget it either um let's see uh I'm sorry, I've lost track of who's gone yet. Andy, right? Mm -hmm. Um, remind me one more time what your uh, the pack kind of archetype you oh, went with. Yeah, I went with the uh, many have tested my sword arm and now wait, wait to meet vengeance upon me in the afterlife. So gore and hatred. Gore yeah. and hatred. Who are you most afraid of taking revenge on you, and why would they seek revenge against you? <laughs> um it's my wife my wife <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right cool why <laughs> I... oh oh no it's about like it's like gamble it's like an unending string of debts that i left her with Like a bunch of both like gambling related violence and, and debt and debt related to having killed a bunch of people like or like done a bunch of damage in the process of trying to dodge out on debt. Wow. Classy. If, if I could, I have a follow up. Yeah, I mean, go for it. Does our society have blood debt? Like, is that a thing? Oh. Ooh. I mean, I, I don't see why not <laughs> unless somebody objects. Sounds like we, 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 sounds like you found it. Okay. Yeah. I, I might also be afflicted with that since somebody got executed, but I'm not yeah. the executioner and I've done nothing wrong. Right. <laughs> Great. It's, all very, it's all very messy. Mm hmm. Great. All right. Um, do we have more, like, are there more questions that people have that we want to answer or should we move on to find out why we're turning into wolves? Uh, I'm down to move on. How does everyone else feel? All right. Then we're going to choose our spell. This is uh, the reason why we're turning into wolves. Uh, there are four in the issue two, which is where uh, the, the game first sh showed up. And then I have four additional ones that will show up in the <coughs> kickstarted record album, in case mm -hmm. you haven't heard that that's happening. <laughs> Ooh, ah. I will read them off and we'll decide which one appeals to us most. The first one is, for generations long past, this curse has been upon you and your kin. This very night you shall lope out as children of Fenris and drive a rival clan from the Vale. The second one is, uh, the task before you is not one suited for the civilized, so you turn to dark magics and shift your flesh into a form more suitable. The next one is, the augurs dictate that only fang and claw will rend your destiny. The fourth one is, relics of an ancient cult plundered from an old queen's tomb carry with them a savage curse that can only be cleansed in distant holy fires. The fifth one is, a pack with knowledge of wild wizardry and a keen interest in a particular human affair have possessed your bodies and left you theirs. Sixth one is a sorceress tyrant of the north has molded your flesh wolfward and to add to their menagerie of civilized beasts to be proudly displayed before their court. Seventh one is each of you swallow a small fetish carved of wolf bone to shed your human flesh and cross the veil to seek there a fey stolen child. And the final one is transformed by thunder and lightning in a storm of swift and uncanny origins. 
you are filled with an irresistible rage against the giants said to live beyond the mountains. Does any of those call out? I think from this crew of misfits that we've assembled, the second one mm. kind of sounds appealing. I was also thinking about that one. That's the task before you is one not suited for civilized, so you turn to dark magics and shift your flesh to a more suitable form? Yeah, I was looking at that one. Same. That one or swallowing the bones, but I like this one too, and it seems like more people are into it. All right, let's go with it. So uh, this is good. I like this this, uh, group of outsiders and, and, I mean, no, you're not all outsiders, right? Like, but yeah, held apart in some ways. Some your character is very much a part of society, right? Like you're, yeah. You've got like some. So, do you assemble these outsiders? Is that the? Are you the um, Nick Fury of the <laughs> <laughs> of these wolf adventures? Uh, does that work, or it's his Misha? No. Uh, I thought I, I thought Gian's character was the uh, high priestess. Yeah, yeah high priestess. I mean, I think that would only make sense if everyone else was affiliated with like the cult or in, in some way, you know. Um, mm-hmm. uh, also, just as a note, my mic has like a two to four second audio delay, so if it seems like I'm not immediately responding, that's why. Right. Um, just, <laughs> just to remind everybody. <laughs> no um, or sorry, my headphones. Um, I don't know. How does everyone feel about basically, maybe even if you're not a member of the the sect that I belong to, um, there is a, a provision in which I can like demand audience and demand fealty for a specific task. And I've done that, which I imagine might rankle against some people, but you know, mm-hmm. if we're all gathered together for a specific purpose, then I get to call uh, with that authority. Yeah, that sounds, especially the three of us, and you being so young, we're like, mm-hmm. God damn it, fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. I like the tension that that sets up. Is this is this like an uh, like the ability to absolve blood debt? Because yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, <laughs> I think maybe the the task before me is one that I have been not that I have like originally uh, wanted, but was told to me to see through. And Mm -hmm. one of the authorities that was given to me as high priestess is I can absolve all blood debts of anyone who will fulfill the task with me, Um, but they have to see it through. All right. So we have to, we have to devise this, this, uh, this here task. Um, Where are we located? So are we, are we, I'm kind of getting a vision of like one of those uh, fantasy cities that's just bigger than you would expect it to be with lot like have an actual uh underworld and like a bustling metropolis in the fantasy world does that work for everyone or were you thinking somewhere different and farther away yeah works for me all right can can we meet on top of a ziggurat Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's my only request. <laughs> I don't know why I haven't been meeting on top of a cigarette until this moment. <laughs> so many good opportunities, so little time. <laughs> yes. Um, so let's, if, if I may just kind of like throw out an idea here. Let, um, let's have something stolen from your cult that you have to go retrieve uh, really? oh, maybe it's something stolen like generations ago. So this is like a, oh. so it's not like an immediate thing, but you're like, we know that the, uh, I'm, I'm just going to say a bear cult. There's a bear cult that, uh, an older bear cult in the city that um, you are fairly certain has uh, like the bones of a, a an old um holy person some like saint relic kind of thing that belongs to your sect does that work oh maybe it's yeah maybe it's the bones it's like the reliquary of a saint who was mid transformation when they were martyred Uh all right so 
Uh, yeah, that's great. So the, hold on, my desk just. All right, we're good. That was we're so good. dramatic. <laughs> no earthquakes, <laughs> please. Really yeah. Starting now. <laughs> it's it's an adjustable desk, and it just wow. adjusted down on its okay. own. So we're good. Okay. Cool. Great. Uh, yeah. All right. So um, the this one's pretty straightforward. At the end of this spell, if you complete your task, we will roll to see if you turn back into human, and everyone will get a plus three to their blood die if you happen to have uh completed the task you can also abandon it and say we just need to turn back to you because we'll never be able to get this done but i believe in you <laughs> um so the next step we're going to do is we're going to actually change into woes so i mean we're on top of this ziggurat it's clearly nighttime and uh or early evening storm clouds are coming in and this is like full-on like lightning striking the building and uh hitting pillars that are up there that are um while you're all around a uh like a, a big stone altar um and i mean you all went into this willingly you all know what's coming but you don't know like what's coming like you, you you're like yeah We'll do that thing, but uh, you've never done it before. I'm, I believe, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. Um, so the way this part works is I'm going to start describing your transformations and uh, at any time you can interrupt me and ask me questions about how it feels, smells, tastes, sounds, or appears. And then I'm going to I have a list of questions that I have to ask you. And uh, who wants to be the first to transform? Mm. I will be. I'll do it. All right. That's great. Leading uh, so by example. You, yeah. <laughs> are you like, like, do you have like, like regalia? Are you like standing and shouting to this or is, or is this like humbling you a little bit? Uh, I think, um, I think there is maybe a ritual that I am to lead and I lead it well, but the transformation itself is actually very, like raw and vulnerable for everybody. Um, I I see like a like a pile of ritual furs that we're supposed to don that mm -hmm. aren't necessarily going to shift into being our fur, but are like symbols. Um, but there can be nothing retained of humanity like in the shifting. And so there's this moment where we all have to shed our human garments and then put on these furs. And for me especially, it's a really raw moment and for for that moment i don't want to be there and i don't want mm -hmm. to be doing it i feel very uncertain um of my authority but i put on the fur and then the transformation starts i think almost to see yeah I, I i am all in for that all right um yeah, yeah. so you you put the you know you, you shed your human garments and you've put the this fur on and uh step forward and like I described the lightning coming down and it just kind of comes in and starts stitching the fur into your own flesh. Uh, and then you can feel your, your muscles and your bones change shape, which is uh, not um, a familiar feeling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it is a, uh, a bizarre thing to have happen and you start to buckle over. And my question for you is, uh, what is most painful about this shift? Um, I think the most painful thing is the bones, like, you know, even though mammalian anatomy is somewhat similar to itself, like wolves have longer legs, they yeah. just have a completely different structure. And we're all awake in ourselves for this transformation. So the shifting of the bones from my human frame into the wolf pain, or the wolf frame is like, painfully, ex it's excruciating. Um, and what's worst about it is it completely overwhelms any train of thought I might have, any kind of consciousness, any connection that I feel to my self, like my, my selfhood is just gone in that moment of transformation. It's very animal and primal and frightening, um, very frightening. Nice. Who's next? <laughs> Who Do I choose? Or, no, you choose. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, I'll go. Get it All right. Uh, so is it the same thing? Do you just follow suit? Is this like, oh yeah, this is a weird thing. I'm used to it. Or yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, I, I like I'm like looking through the pile and and like letting you know the the things swirling around me guide me to pick one and then pull it on and that's the right. one. I nice. Uh, so uh, the same thing. We've we've got like lightning. Uh, crashing around, thunder rolling in, the sky turning purple and green, uh, and uh, you can feel the the fur uh, stitch into your body and the changing. Uh, and my question for you is, uh, what is most familiar about this shifting? Ooh, um, it feels. Kind of like when I slip into a trance to commune with the spirits. Um, there's kind of that um, falling away of my body and and my mind expanding to to speak with everything else, and so the the consciousness kind of expanding and oh wait I can smell more things huh that's interesting yeah. oh I can hear more oh that's interesting. And so that kind of reconnecting with the, the world as, but now I'm feeling it through my senses as opposed to just through my consciousness. So it's familiar, but not at the same time. Nice. All right, who's next? Me. All right. <laughs> um, How do you only, step forward? How do you, oh yeah. I wanna uh, make sure this is okay. I think um, Andy's character is tasked to make sure that I do this. <laughs> <laughs> Delightful. Uh, yeah, so Andy's character is standing there like, I will fuck you up directly if you don't put on <laughs> right. one of these first. Mm -hmm. um, and so I do. All right, that's great. Uh, yeah, so do you do, I mean, like, are you like, fine, I'll do it. Or are you like trying to get out of doing it uh, I, I think I'm looking like over the side, like I could maybe climb down this cigarette. Mm -hmm. Especially mm -hmm. because the, the high priestess and the, the witchy person are both like vulnerable and occupied and not mm -hmm. thinking about it. No, I, I could just go. And then I look over my shoulder and Andy's character is standing there like, put, put on. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I would have squirreled out of it. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it, it like even before you get the the furs entirely on, they feel like you know like um, it's like static electricity, like it's pulling uh, the fur to your body, like uh, it's starting to cling to you already. Um, and then again, like everyone else, it starts stitching in, and you feel the the strange shiftings inside. And my question for you is, uh, how does the shifting warp your consciousness? I, um, as we're all in this moment of shared vulnerability, um, I have a dawning affinity for my new, my pack. Um, mm -hmm. And whereas before I was like, no, I don't, I don't know any of you. I don't want to be here, blah, blah, blah. Like I get this sense of, these are my pack mates. And for better or worse, these are the ones that are relying on me and who I'm relying on. Mm. And so I, I probably feel, um, I feel closer to everybody than like mere time and human interaction would allow me to get. All right, Andy. Hello. How do you do this? <laughs> now that you've you've forced uh, uh, not just character into it, what what is your having? Oh, so having successfully used that as cover for uh, her own like nervous nervousness and like trepidation, right? There's this like I have a task. I can just I can devote myself to the task, which is threatening you. <laughs> um, there's you. She sort of gives in as this transformation begins and has had to watch everybody else begin. Um, and you can't quite tell if she reaches for the fur or if it like 
like meets her before she can walk across like the the two steps away for the last remaining fur um and like wraps it around her uh wraps it around her body and i think we see that again that more of this electricity that begins to spark across her and she like kind of turns away from this group initially uh in this like deeply private moment like back to this idea of vulnerability Okay, then that leads me to my uh, the question from this list here, which is what dread seeps into your soul during the shifting? Oh, being unpackaged and undone and made like rendered sincere. Interesting. All right. Uh, so we have a pack of wolves as, as on top of this ziggurat with a thunderstorm around you. Um, oh, yeah. so rat. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I assume I just have this vision of of all of you kind of just prowling around on top there. But before I can complete this vision, we need to describe our wolves. All right? Critically, yes. And the rules for this are: you get to describe uh, your coat, your size, your scent, and your voice. Uh, mm -hmm. And I will let you ponder on that for a moment. And when someone's ready, you go ahead and speak out. Um, oh, go ahead. Yeah, so I think um, mine is is this kind of like pale, pale gray color, um, like uh, not quite like a really dirty white kind of color. Mm -hmm. um, she uh, she's thin um, and almost emaciated looking. Um, uh, her scent is kind of carrion-like, um, and her voice is bready, like almost not there. Mm. Excellent. I see where you're going with this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm spoopy wolf. I have to be spoopy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I can go next. Yeah. My coat is, um, it's brindle, black and, black and brown. Um, I'm, I'm tall at the shoulder, but very, very kind of thin. So I have like this rangy, lopy wolf body. Um, my scent, I smell like wet fur. Um, and not because there's a thunderstorm. It's just how I smell. Um, I might also smell a bit like bear i'm thinking um, i don't smell like a bear but right. if you were to put on a wet bear fur and walk around <laughs> there's like this <laughs> this over scent um that clouds uh my person um and my voice is thin and wheedling i have i have like a whine uh, when i address everyone else like the Chancellor from uh, Dark Crystal. If oh, yeah. that oh, person was a dog. Yeah. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> All right. I'm I'm down to do this. Let's see. Yeah, go for it. Um my wolf's coat is surprisingly like full. And you know how um, I'm thinking about like these deep russets and browns and like the black tip. And so a lot of like the cream base with a lot of like those um, brown and uh, like tan highlights. And with dark, like a dark muzzle and dark feet. So, and a, like a dark, like bush of a tail. Nice. Um, and then I think relative to what I've heard y'all say, um, my wolf is sort of like pretty, like, like not necessarily like big, but compared to y'all's like little narrow lank friends <laughs> is like, looks relatively healthy uh, and like in proportion. And like, so like solidly built. Um, and like, well, a well-formed wolf. So, <laughs> <laughs> and she smells like the fields in late summer when the earth is finally warmed all the way through and everything is woken up and done all the work it needs to do. And there's like slowness and peace. And her voice is 
to match that ease and like that like robustness of build is like really full and round and surprisingly like there's a bright sharp edge of um like an exclamation it's just made of like forward momentum okay. yeah um my wolf uh has a tawny coat with like a white winter undercoat I'm not, I'm not sure what season it is. I'm getting the feeling that it's summer. But her coat is full and rich as though the, the air is like snapping with cold outside. Um, mm. And uh, her eyes are an unsettlingly pale gray. Um, I think that her voice when she howls or vocalizes is surprisingly like lilting and melodious it's not a wolf's voice it's 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 like someone ritualizing a wolf mm. um and in much the same way her her scent like the scent of her fur and her presence is like um the scent of a loved one's skin when they've been sunbathing you know, that warm kind of golden smell that they get. But again, it's not quite wolfish. It's almost human without being human. Um, just in that thin edge of in-between. Excellent. Uh, <clears throat> that's everyone, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so now as per tradition here on actual play, we will now name each other's wolves uh, oh, yeah. based on what we understand them to look like. Uh, these are the wolves names, not our previous human names. Um, and uh, does anyone have a suggestion? Wait, sorry, I, I'm not sure if I understood. Are we naming our own wolves or no, someone we're naming else's wolves? Oh, that, that, okay. that was the thing that kind of grew okay. out of how we've been doing this is that. Uh, right. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's different no, than when I did it. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Misha, what color was your coat again? Uh, like super pale. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. My brain was like shade, and then I was like, "That's already your name." Try again. <laughs> Different character. <laughs> Different character. Um, which is not to say no one else can name Nisha. I'm just thinking things. Yeah, I was, I was like, I mean, going with the straightforward something like ghost or phantom. Mm -hmm. uh, totally see naming a, a a dog like that or Banshee. What if your name was Banshee? Ooh, like it. <laughs> Do you like Banshee? I do like it. All right. Excellent. There's one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, one name that we've used before, I believe, is Summer, which I think fits yeah. well with Andy's. Well with Andy. Yeah, Andy. Yeah. Andy's summer. wolf sounds like Summer. Yeah. Great. Into it. For Gian, I'm feeling like a votive or something oh. candly, but not because because you're kind of nature, but you're really human, and candles be like that. Not to diminish <laughs> what yeah. you said, yeah. but like that's the feeling <laughs> that I'm kind of yeah. Uh, oh. bring, bring nature indoors, ritual, about, right? Yeah. What about lumen? Ooh. Like, yeah. I like that. And then all right, our rangy uh, uh smells I, I, like river river fur and bears and claws. Uh, <laughs> I just want everyone oh. to love me. What Needle. about I mean this is sort of very direct, but what about Ursa? Like Ooh. Ursa major, Ursa minor. Yes, I like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. Banshee, Summer, Lumen, and Ursa. Excellent. We have named our wolves. 
Uh, all right, I'm going to read this next part because we need to talk a little bit about how wolves communicate in this game. And uh, this is just a chunk of me reading, and I apologize, but uh, it's worth going through. Um, Though the wolves cannot engage in dialogue as you and I would, they are able to communicate with each other with similar clarity, particularly on topics leading to immediate action. Wolf players are encouraged to describe how their wolves communicate, but should also make sure that the other players know what their wolf is trying to say and that their wolves comprehend it. So you can totally describe your wolf like whining and rolling around and pantomiming something, but uh, then tell us what your wolf is actually trying to say. And we will know <laughs> what your wolf is trying to say. Uh, scent markings. Like the written word, wolves can leave scents uh, on the terrain for other wolves and similar animals to interpret. These markings establish the wolf's territory, how long the wolf has been by, and the likelihood of good prey in the area. Any wolf beholding the world that listens to their nose will discern these things from nearby scent markings. So feel free to leave scent markings. Um, howling. This is one of my favorite parts of the game. Uh, a wolf's howl may be an expression of affection, loss, or simply excitement. A wolf howling is likely to cause any wolf who can hear it to howl as well. Thus, howling can also reveal the location and size of any nearby packs. Any wolf with a feral score of one or more must roll a blood result to resist joining a howl. When you howl, you must tell your fellow players what you're saying. You can't just howl for the sake of howling. You have to have something specific to say. Uh, I mentioned feral score there, and I should talk about that. Nobody has a feral score yet. A feral score is the only real stat that we keep track of in this game. You all start off with a feral score of zero, which means that you're not particularly wolfy. As we play, you'll gain some points in there, and uh, the feral score is always added to your wolf die. You don't get to choose like the what you have for your uh, blood die. You, you have to add that to your wolf die. And uh, the higher it gets, the better you are at doing wolfy things. But of course, uh, the the less good you are at doing not wolfy things. Cool. Uh, and finally, wrestling. Oh, no, not finally. I'm sorry. Uh, wrestling. Wolves also communicate through play. Wolves eager to play face each other uh, with their heads down and haunches raised. And then we have like a chart that we roll on if you wrestle to find out how well that went. In the beginning, it's usually awkward. It doesn't go too well. But uh, <laughs> you get better at it. Uh, and grooming. Grooming is an important part of pack health and communication. When wolves groom one another, they clean each other's fur, teeth, and any wounds they may have suffered. They reestablish their relationships. Grooming can only happen during quiet moments when the pack is at rest. When you casually groom with a wolf that has more feral than you, you may choose to gain one feral. So that's one way to get more feral. Uh, in addition, being groomed by the entire pack will eliminate the effect of Winter's Wrath. And that's just the condition that uh, you can get from time to time that makes you vulnerable. That's so good. Yes. So, uh, where are we now? We got, let, let's just do, uh, I'm just going to do a quick overview of the three main moves in this game. This is, uh, works a little bit like a Powered by the Apocalypse game, if you're familiar with those. Uh, and those are to behold the world. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, to behold the world, to face the perilous, and to sate a hunger or bend the world to your will. That last one is one move. Uh, <laughs> wow. To behold the world, uh, you'll roll the dice and you'll look to see uh, which one's higher. And that result will tell you uh, the types and number of questions you can ask me. This is you looking out and trying to find out what's out there. I encourage you to do this whenever you don't know what to do next because it really helps uh, get things moving along. To face the perilous is something we do when danger is afoot and uh, immediately threatening you. To say to hunger or bend the world to your will is something that we do when you're trying to do something. Wolves sate their hunger uh, and humans bend the world to their will. And you're going to try to do it and you're going to roll to find out which of those two you're actually going to end up doing. So you may have plans and the dice may have different plans for you. Yes. Nice. All right. Uh, I think this might be a good time for our break. Is that I was fun? just about to request one. That's yes. cool. Uh, five minutes, 10 minutes. I'm not sure how long. I think it's like five or seven minutes or something five. like that. Great. 
great. But I think Strash is going to give us a break and then let us know when we're out. Yay! So I'm going to just dance here for the audience. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do.